Hi, I'm Namita Vahi. I'm a fellow at the Center for Policy Research and uh, I head the Land Rights Initiative there, which I created a few years ago, essentially to create an institutional space for doing systematic research on uh, land issues in India, especially mapping the state's relationship to land and how the state redistributes land relations between various individuals and groups in the country. So at the Land Rights Initiative, currently, we have several projects where we are trying to map this relationship. The first project, uh, which is on uh, land acquisition, which is about the state's power to expropriate land belonging to private individuals for a public purpose upon payment of just compensation. This project is essentially uh, trying to uh, you know, sort of intervene meaningfully in the policy and legislative debates regarding land acquisition because there was uh, a historic uh, replacement of an existing law on land acquisition which had been in force for 120 years. And so, but soon after it came into force, there was an attempt to amend the law further which means that there's a, you know the contestation around land acquisition continues and we haven't really settled it legislatively at all so uh, what we tried to do was to create systematic data we created a database of all supreme court decisions on land acquisition over the last 66 years so this is the most comprehensive and systematic study of land acquisition litigation in india but it is also uh, you know the uh, sort of it is also the, one of the most representative studies because the Supreme Court hears cases from all across the country. So geographically as well, we've covered litigation from all the states in India that has gone up to the Supreme Court. We also have a few other projects on land. Um, we have one project where we are studying, on, uh, studying land rights in the scheduled areas of India. These are specially demarcated areas under the fifth and sixth schedules of the Indian Constitution, which create special protections for tribal populations uh, or indigenous populations in India. So essentially, uh, you know, these uh, schedules pertain to tribal majority districts in tribal minority states within Peninsular India, so 10 states within Peninsular India. And the sixth schedule applies to tribal populations in the northeastern states of India, some of whom are tribal majority states, like Meghalaya. So essentially in this project, what we are investigating is why are these tribal populations the most vulnerable and displaced groups within India, and also the most impoverished, even though we have specialized protections. And there we find that, you know, the specialized protections are nullified by a contrary regime of land acquisition, forest and mining laws, and which is why this also relates to the work on land acquisition um, as well. And apart from this, we are also trying to create a systematic database of all land laws in India. Um, we are going to put this up in, on a website so that it is easily accessible to the public. In fact, we have found already 804 laws governing various aspects of land, including land tenancy, land sealing, land acquisition and so on and we are planning to put this out uh, on a public platform very soon and finally we are also working on a project on the constitutional right to property which enables individuals to claim uh, you know claim their property as their right against the state when it wants to take it away so it regulates when the state can take away your rights and this right was particularly important in the entire demonetization exercise that recently took place which essentially involved uh, you know taking away of people's money uh, and you know uh, sort of eliminating the RBI's debt on these issues. So these are the four projects that we are working on and here at this conference, I'm very pleased to be here at this uh, first international conference on land and development. And I'll be speaking tomorrow about our research on the land acquisition cases. Thank you.